Hi everybody, this is Promethium5 from Collection DX here to talk to you today about Hot Toys newest movie masterpiece series release, the 1 6 scale Iron Monger from the first Iron Man movie. In the movie, Iron Monger is a gigantic, crude imitation of Tony Stark's Iron Man suit, and everything about it is bigger because they just don't have the technological know-how that Stark does in the movie to create such a sleek suit as the Iron Man armor. The toy stands around 18 inches tall. You can compare here to the first Iron Man Mark III release by Hot Toys, which is a little over 12 inches tall in 1 6 scale, and a little tiny Wraith Faden down here, our standard Collection DX scale mascot. Uh, the toy is just gigantic. Everything about it moves like it's supposed to, and it weighs a ton. It's really an impressive piece. Now, there is a complete written review of the toy up on the site that I'll put a link to in this post, but I wanted to give you guys just a little turnaround view and go through some of the action features on the toy, which look better in motion. You can see here that the toy is detailed all the way around and is just really imposing. It's a huge piece and the paint is incredible, the detail is amazing, the stance is good, it, it looks the part of the design in the movie. So we're going to get into just a couple of the features here because it only has a couple features besides being huge. Like their previous Iron Man movie releases, Hot Toys Iron Monger has a number of light up features to add detail and realism like in the film. Uh, the first one I'm going to show off is in the head and the chest arc reactor. And the light switch for that is accessed by this little panel here which is on a hinge that springs open and feels pretty solid. You're not going to accidentally break this hinge. There's a little tiny switch here that just goes down and there was a battery uh, shipping tab that had to be removed. You can see the slot 4 on the panel. And here we are with the head and chest arc reactor lights on. They're nice and bright and you know everything in the movie was about all these light and shining pieces of technology against dark silhouettes and backdrops so having the lights on the toys is really a nice touch. And there's also oops, that panel there. There's lights in both gloves uh, with little switches here. So we just flip those on. And here you can see the individually posable fingers and the palm light. And then there's actually another light on both sides for the weapon sights. And these are nice and bright too, with really fine housings to seam and scale. We can move this out of the way, we can do the other side. And it's pretty much the same thing. There's another little switch under here. You can see the battery compartment there with a just a little Phillips head screw. So that light goes on. And then there's a sight for the missile launcher too. And I really like having the lights on there because they, again, they just add to the lifelike nature of Hot Toys releases. The detail is good and they just, they really capture the presence of the things there depicting on screen. The next feature we're going to talk about is the opening cockpit, which is insane. Um, in the end of the movie, when Obadiah Stane is fighting Tony Stark, Tony Stark knocks out his targeting sensor, and Obadiah has to open the cockpit to see Tony for the end of the fight. And so we get a lot of good detail shots in the film of how that cockpit works. And Hot Toys has used all that reference to make a really impressive design. To open the cockpit, we start by pulling these two chest pieces out and sliding them down. And these feel nice and solid. They're not going to break off or anything. They've got springs on there. And then the arc reactor pulls out, which is a little funny because you have to slide it past the chest armor plates. So we slide that out and down and then this little tab here folds in. And then we can open the cockpit up and see a little dude inside there. 
The Obadiah stain head comes packed separately so it doesn't get scratched in the shipping box. And it attaches by just a regular Hot Toys ball joint. And all of this torso here is actually has a soft silicone skin on it so it can be seamless and move around. So here we see Obadiah in the cockpit. And it's on a ball joint, a double ball joint, so everything moves around. He can look around and say, you know, I'm coming to get you, Tony Stark. And the torso's got a little play to it side to side, so you can lean him that way, like he's recoiling in horror from something he's seen. And the sculpt is one of Hot Toys' best yet. It's really impressive. In pictures, you can almost not tell that it is a miniature toy head. Uh, really beautiful work on the beard and the eyes and, you know, Obadiah Stane's baldness. Baldness is important in movies. And to close this back up, we simply reverse all the steps. And there's actually a rubber liner on the inside of the helmet to prevent you from scratching the head sculpt because it can store in there without springing up and down. This doesn't go anywhere. So you simply tilt the head back fold the helmet down and just make sure you're slipping the head into the neck cavity and then fold this back up. You have to kind of spread these out to fit the arc reactor back up there. Just tuck all this back together and it goes together nice and solidly. And once it's on, it's, it's not you know, easily dislodged, everything locks in place. It's nice and solid and really, really beautiful. The next feature I want to show off is the retractable missile launcher in the uh, back of the left shoulder. This comes apart with a panel just like the battery compartment for the lights. And then a second panel here, I'll try and give you a view of that. This panel comes up and then slides over to the side. And there's a little warning in the instructions not to flap that around and get it caught on anything so you don't break it. But it feels pretty rugged. I think you'd have a tough time breaking it off. The hardest part about this is actually getting the missile launcher out. It uh, has a couple different set of rails in there that it slides in on. And it looks good, but it, you need fine fingers to get in there. And I don't have pretty small fingers. But you just reach in and pull this out. And then it pulls out a second layer so that the missile launcher can actually deploy. And then it's on a hinge here. And there's actually some swivel action to it. And the missile is removable. This came, that's not in focus, this came as a separate part in the box, so again, it didn't get scratched up. It just slides in there with the fin sticking up. It looks pretty good. So we can turn the figure around. The launcher fits over the shoulder piston and out of the way. So Obadiah can sight the launcher and take out some kind of hard target with that. Again, it, this is the kind of fine detail that Hot Toys is known for. And, you know, the part's rugged. It feels durable. It looks great. The paint is immaculate. It just, I don't have anything but nice things to say about it. Putting it back is a lot easier than getting it out because you can just kind of jam it all back in there. It slides in pretty smoothly. It doesn't feel like you're going to break it. And then the two hatches go back where they came from. And there you go. You can't even tell that there was a missile there, but we know. Everything about this toy is awesome, but we do have to talk about the price for a second because that's not so awesome. Uh, Hot Toys Iron Monger retails for about $500 US, which is a pretty big chunk of change. But for $500, you are getting the best version of this design uh, to date and I'm sure forever. I don't see any way you're going to surpass this. It just, as with all Hot Toys movie figures, if you see it in the movie, it's on the toy, it works correctly, and there's, just, there's no alternative to this. I mean, you can get the little Hasbro figures, and those are nice for what they are. They only cost, you know, $10, $15, and they look the part. But if you want accuracy and detail and everything to work the way it's supposed to, this is it. So, if you're an Iron Man fan, if you're an, a movie fan, or even just a Hot Toys collector, uh, this is one not to be missed. It just... I don't think they're going to sell out as fast as some of the smaller releases do just because not everybody has $500 to throw around, but once they're gone, they're going to be impossible to find. I mean, these are going to go to collectors and they're just going to sit on them. And 
appreciate them for what they are. Uh, my Hot Toys Iron Monger came courtesy of Angles.com. I'll put a link up to their page on this, in the review. And I just want to say thank you guys so much. This is just an incredible toy. I absolutely love it. It's the centerpiece of my Iron Man collection. And really, the centerpiece of my toy collection at this point. It, you know, 4 Max is bigger and has more action to it, but this is, this is a nicer looking toy. This is just, this thing stands out on a shelf. Really, really thrilled to have it. And thanks to Collection DX and thanks to Angles.com for giving me a chance to review this. Remember, check out the written review on the site, and I'll put a link in the notes. Thanks.